We turned it on as uh, Jericho Unmasked, however, and it was literally like God told me I needed to see Jericho live get unmasked. To unmask again. He's done that. I think this is the third time in recent times. I was going to say, let, let's go through all the masked wrestlers Chris Jericho has impersonated. I think, uh, I think he was Mysterio. He was freaking, um, oh, um, who was Kalisto's partner? Sin Cara. Sin Cara, yeah, Sin Cara, yeah. fucking uh, Bushi, and now uh, Pentagon Jr. Chris Jericho. <laughs> so that is... Chris Jericho, professional cosplayer. Chris, Chris Jericho has a long and storied history of just fucking with luchadors. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to Fight Boys, Boys, ladies and gentlemen, the and weekly gentlemen, podcast from a professional to professional wrestling. I'm Daddy 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 Daddy. I am your host, as always, the Imitator 5000, the Dylan. <laughs> We've reached a new low. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who said that? Who, I don't know who this is who's talking. Um, the, um, <laughs> Blake, you were gone for one week. Now Scotty pretends you don't know or he doesn't know who you are. I am Burlock Tanro. Burlock um, Tanro. I would love if this is someone's first episode of Fight Boys, because I did promote the fuck out of us at Dragon Con to a point where one of the fellow panelists was just like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, do you have a wrestling podcast? None of us do. Yeah. <laughs> so this is someone's first episode, and all they hear is me rapid fire doing the intro, and then Burlock Tanro introducing <laughs> himself. No, I am the blattest man on the planet. Blake Tanner. Uh, oh, man. So, wrestling happened this week, guys. I don't know what you mean, because all I saw was truth. <laughs> Our truth. Our truth. A, a man so good at being just the most lovable dipshit that he has now got what culture and, like, everyone being like, is Carmella a babyface now because she's with Our truth And I'm like, yeah. He's so sure, I'll buy it. I'll, some, I'll buy it. He somehow got her to be a baby face. He got her over. Do you have any idea what kind of what kind of rub that is? Like he couldn't get Ty Dillinger over, but he got Carmelo over instantly. Yeah, exactly. Can I also uh, say just like the fact that um <laughs> his our truth his like mentor segments with Ty Dillinger are so much better than any mentor segment I've seen in WWE wrestling in years. Oh, you didn't like making Darren Young great again? No, I didn't. <laughs> no. With 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 uh good old duck butt. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't like the segment where they're like, "What do we do with this progressive wrestler who just came out as gay in the media? Let's give him a Donald Trump slogan and let him run with it." We'll see if he let's, can. let's give him a Donald Trump a Trump slogan and the whitest wrestler that's ever wrestled for us. A man who does not know homosexuality exists. <laughs> if you told Bob Backlund that, he'd be like, wait, what? Oh, okay. my, favorite, my favorite Bob Backlund story is that uh, apparently like at the gathering of the Jigglos, they had a wrestling event and Mick Foley was on commentary with like the, one of the founders. Yeah. And and Mick Foley turned to the guy while Bob Backlund was like going and like throwing like trash out of a trash can at fans. He's like, "Can I cuss?" And he's like, "Yeah, you get one." He was like, "Bob Backlund is fucking insane." <laughs> <laughs> God bless him. I saw the best description about Kevin Owens of uh, like his current storyline of all time. It was someone saying. Kevin Owens is currently portraying every wrestling fan ever who at the end of Raw says, fuck this, I quit, I'm never coming back, and then he shows up next Monday anyways. It, <laughs> medium. What is Kevin Owens doing right now? Because I've been a little out of it. So last uh, week... He teamed up... So, so last week he got beat up, and then he was sad because Braun had been beating him up for forever. And so this week... He decided to like help Braun because that's how this works. Wait, was that the was he fighting Lashley? I, I, don't, I don't actually remember. I didn't watch the show. 
<laughs> I, okay. None of us do. Kevin last week quit Raw because that's what he does, leading to a lot of intrigue from the internet of what's next for him? Maybe he's going to come back as a Paul Heyman guy. Maybe they're going to put him in the title picture. And then this week they're like... Oh, I'll fucking no. And then this week they're like, he's attacking Bobby fucking Lashley because... I don't know, he hurt his friend, I guess? Bobby, Bobby Lashley, the dude that beat Roman Reigns clean and didn't get a title shot, that's who I know him as. <laughs> that special boy, Bobby, ruined immediately Lashley. Yep. I, I, I believe I believe Kenny Omega said it best in, in his interviews post all in, and uh, WWE might have all, all of like, the like the sizzle but we have all the substance yeah <laughs> yeah uh, i guess that goes into like wwe being so moment focused mm -hmm. that it's no, just they're, lowest, they're listen they're on public they're on they're a public they're on cable they are catering to the lowest common denominator to gain as much revenue as possible that's how they've gotten where they are which is by sacrificing anything above a third grade level <laughs> in terms of sensationalism and moment building. Mm -hmm. Sounds like, about right. That's, so, that, that, that's it. So what you're saying is they would be the type of company that, I don't know, put their world heavyweight champion doing a backstage promo where all he does is watch a fucking video of an anteater that you don't get to watch. It's just AJ watching a video of an anteater and then just be like, ha, well, that's pretty funny. I like that. All right. Um... AJ Styles, I'm the, I'm one of the best wrestlers in the world. Watching Ant Eaters, love them. Samoa Joe's assaulting my family and causing horrible things to happen in my life, but this Ant Eaters really fucking turned me around. I mean, I got real mad that one time, and it didn't look like no one liked it, so I'm not gonna do that anymore. Have you actually seen the video of the Ant Eater? No. It's it literally is an anteater with AJ Styles theme over it. And then at the where AJ's pyro had happened, the anteater stands up and assumes the AJ Styles pose. Oh, now I know the exact same anteater video you're talking yeah. about now. Exactly. So it was a good video, but hey WWE, if you're gonna talk about AJ watching this video. Put it on your channel with it. Don't just have AJ chuckling at his phone as he's like, "Look at that anteater. I just look at that feller." I look, I look, I, I look forward to the hell in a cell. Oh, by the way, the hell in a cell like promotional poster is a great example of everything that's wrong with graphic design. It's so fucking bad. I love it. It, it, it looks like the cgi from like the first greatest song in the world tribute video from from tenacious d yeah but like if it was done in photoshop instead like the same quality but like and then they'd used coloring that wasn't complimentary at all like it really just just clusterfuck the poster it okay just as the official graphic designer for the bs network who makes all the shirts and logos i've never seen this so let me just look at this poster really quick oh god <laughs> i wish oh, i wish we had the <laughs> it's so bad you have no idea. See, you see, people at home, we can't see Scotty's reaction because of the way he has this set up, so he can record it for Twitch. So we don't, we don't know his, what how he looks right now. So savor this if you're watching it because. <laughs> what is up with Brian? It, he looks exactly like the demon from the greatest video or the greatest song in the world tribute. He looks like Shrek. No, no, because Roman looks like the demon. It looks like if the demon from Tribute and Shrek had a weird crossover movie called Hell in a Cell. Yeah. So, so what you're telling me is it's the greatest song in the world. Yes, it was the greatest song in the world. Yeah. See, my favorite Hell in a Cell poster was still the one with Punk as the devil. And that was it. They were just like, what do we do? Let's take the most hated heel in this company and just go the final step and make him actually Satan. Wasn't there, wasn't, 
Wasn't there like a No Mercy or like one where it was just our truth in a suit and he wasn't even on that pay per view? <laughs> that's why he was. That's why he was in a suit. He was like, I don't have to wrestle, so I guess I'm just gonna be here in my suit. Oh, have, uh, you, have you guys read about how? I I don't want to say depressed, but how sad Big Cass interviews sound now. You mean you mean like like he's having a come to Jesus moment and he's realized his mistakes and he's he's really he's just trying to like lay the groundwork for his return at the Royal Rumble. Yeah. If I'm gonna be honest with you, I made a lot of mistakes in a very short period of time. I did some things that I shouldn't have done. Like leave fucking Carmella of all people. Guess the company couldn't rely on me and couldn't trust me. Look, I'll be honest with you, they made the right decision. <laughs> Takes a lot of balls to be like, yeah, I should have got fired. Are you kidding me? I made Vince real mad. Yeah. I think the only other person that was that honest about it was Eddie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eddie was like, I, yeah, yeah. I fucked up. Definitely. I, I fucked think up. Jeff's had moments like that. Jeff's had moments of like after his third strike where he was like, yeah, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done a lot of what I've just done. Also, apparently, Big Cass has no fucking clue Enzo is a rapper. And, uh, yeah, someone asked him about his skills, and Big Cass immediately just laughs. He's like, no, I haven't heard- is he- no, I haven't heard that. Are you kidding me? Is he really- is he really one of the hottest rappers right now? No, he's not! It- it- it cemented to me just the fact that this is completely justified because of Enzo's reaction to Cass tearing his ACL that one time during a match. Yeah, yeah. And where Enzo told him, I, I don't know if I could ever forgive you. For tearing your ACL. <laughs> How dare for not, you. For not finishing this match. Yeah. Even I'm... though I, I got like a stinger in the middle of a match from being a dumbass. <laughs> and like... And, <laughs> and they literally had to cancel it. Yeah. They actually but, uh, did carry you, me out on a stretcher. They did. Have you ever seen Have you ever seen like someone about to get hit by a car but you're so far away you can only be like, "Wait, wait, no." And you can't stop it and you can only watch in horror as it happens. That's how and I go, "Oh." Well, that's how I feel about this line in the interview from Big Cass. He goes, "After this interview, I think I'll give it a listen." <laughs> no! Don't do it! <laughs> Back away! Gas, if you value your soul. <laughs> Please stop! Uh, if you care at all about that man, which I don't know why you would, yeah. just don't. Just don't. Also, Alexa Bliss this week had an interview further submitting her to be my favorite diva of all time. Alexa? Yeah, my <laughs> guys, I gotta come up with a different name for her because I can Good old A Bliss had an interview this week. You can just call her Little Miss Bliss, you know. And... Yeah, that's not weird and sounding like I'm Michael Cole trying my web by my best. Little Miss Bliss! Oh my god! She's here! Oh my um, that's Oh my but yeah, she was talking about when she got hired, like her tryout. And firstly, she was like, no one there knew who Triple H was. So I just went up to him and I was like, you're Triple H. Do you know that you're Triple H? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, uh, I get that a lot, though. Uh, <laughs> every show of her 20... Minutes. Uh, <sighs> mm -hmm. We're putting the whole audience to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> night, night, everyone. <laughs> night. But my favorite. Taker's coming on next. <laughs> <laughs> In case you're still awake. My favorite line from the interview, though, is apparently Triple H like looks at her and is like, "Why do you want to be?" In the WWE, uh, <laughs> and straight face. I'm rhyming now. It's my thing. By the way, did you know I'm facing Sting? Uh, 
probably around the same time. Um, yeah, asks her why she wants to stand or why she wants to be there, and she just goes, "I really want to be Tinkerbell at Disney World, and I just hope that this gets my foot in the door." Fuck yes, Alexa. <laughs> That's so good. Shit, I said it again. She's going off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love it. Like, cause you know when you when you say you want to be Tinkerbell at Disney World, you you want to be the person who's flying down that zip line, right? Yeah, you want to be the well, one. That who... was that was normally a dude. Yeah. You want to be oh. the one pulling the Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, just, yeah, and then kicking your legs. That's just, that's a really weird piece of Disney trivia. That it's always a dude? I mean, yeah. I'm sure it's one or the other. I would all, I would almost say you would want well, to I would... a tinier girl. They would weigh less. And the fear of them dying is a lot less. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. Google it. I'm right, <laughs> like usual. Dylan's like, I'm the one. I'm that... right about that. Like I was right about the all-in card. <laughs> Dylan's like, I was right. I live in Orlando. Deal with it. He was also right about the sixth move of Doom being something that would just make him horribly mad. <laughs> it was so bad. I loved it. It was the wind up. It was the it was the crossed arms before he did it. Yeah. It was like the fucking it was like the fucking wind up from like freaking Street Fighter into just a jab. I hope he gets hit by a golf cart. <laughs> I don't want him to have the dignity of getting hit by a car to have that street cart. I want him to get hit by a golf cart because that's embarrassing. See, on the latest episode, well, I guess it will. This episode's coming out before the fun fiction we recorded about John Cena comes out. But Brenna, my co host, brought up a very interesting point, which is what if John was trying to do his fatality but pressed the wrong button and that just led to him punching instead of hitting the fatality? Oh, I'm convinced that this whole thing was just a ruse. A really well done ruse because John Cena's at that point in his career. Where he just doesn't care. You mean yeah. where he's just the ultimate internet troll? Yeah. 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 Oh, my my favorite thing in the world is the fact that he's now forcing WWE to try to turn it into a real thing. Everyone else knows basically it's nothing but Cena trolling them, but WWE <laughs> has to be like, it's the the Thunder Fist, the most vicious move in Chinese. <laughs> It's it's the Thunder Fist. It's the it's the biggest move since the WMD, which was just a punch. That was the big show's finisher, by the way. It was it was a punch. Yeah. Yep. But he's got a big hand. It was always hand. his finisher. He's got a real big hand. That's by that logic, he could just do it at the beginning of the match, and the match would be over. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think a lot of finishers have that problem. I mean, like I I would see. No, no, a lot of them like can be countered. And that's the reason why you can't like the pedigree like that. And they even do back when WWE gave a shit, they would like have people try to do it to show and like establish that internal logic that you can't just like fucking auto spam a finisher and get the win. Yeah. yeah. Now, to be fair, there is a pretty decent um, reversal for the WMD and it's called step to the fucking left like just kind of move out of the way i'm sorry i think you mean slide to the left <laughs> slide to the right no you pull the kevin owens whenever somebody tries to do like a second rope into a cross body and he would just walk to the side oh which i'm yeah. real sad which i'm real sad he hasn't brought back but i guess they don't have the cruiserweights on raw anymore so we can't just do that in a mixed match just be yeah. like no <sighs> And then he just looks down at one of them, puts him in a headlock. Mm -hmm. I still, I like Blake's concept of the uh, Big Show's ultimate rival, the Cha-Cha Kid, who just does the Cha-Cha slide during the match. Oh shit, wait a minute, he already exists. And his, his name is No Way Jose. Oh, I was about to say, why don't we have a JWF character yet named the Cha-Cha Kid? Because there's no way in WWE 2K18 I can make somebody slide to the left and slide to the right unless there's a very specific taunt that I've not found yet. No, no, no. You just have their fin you just have their finisher be the people's elbow and you just call it the Cha-Cha slide. Yeah. 
Man, that's got to be where Rocky got the idea for that, right? He was just like, wait, guys, what if I slide to the left, slide to the right, and then I just elbow him. Elbow drop. <laughs> and that's it. I don't know, Rocky. I mean, it might work. There was that one time he did it in fucking, like, whatever shoes on uh, British Bulldog, and he actually literally did just slide the perfect amount forward and then drop the elbow. My that's fa- a really good gif. No, my favorite people's elbow is still the one where De- or, uh, Undertaker does, like, the dead man sit up, and then Rocky looks at him, then no-sells it and just fucking kicks him to the ground and then runs and does the people elbow anyway. Whole crowd's like, oh my god, oh, he got fucking lit up, all right then. Oh my god, oh, never mind. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man, but you know who I would like to, no, wait, hold on, I was about to say you know who I want to give the people's elbow to, but that's not all right. You know, oh, I thought you were going to say, you know who I want to light up? <laughs> <laughs> you know who I want to light up with? Our lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash a load of BS. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to support the Fight Boys, the entire BS network, you can over at patreon.com slash a load of BS. You get access to our exclusive Discord. You get shouted out every single week on whatever show you want to hear from, like good old Gazi, the Fight Boy himself, donating multiple dollars a month. So if you want to join Gazi and all the other patrons, you can over at patreon.com slash a load of b s now guys i heard there was a wrestling show this weekend there there was i i didn't get to see it until well after it came out because uh reasons Mm -hmm. mainly because i was too cheap to pay to watch the replay of it on honor honor club when i knew that it was eventually going to show up on new japan world that was the main reason oh really i didn't know king of trios was going to be on honor club oh uh, (laughs) oh You're good. You're good. I'm going to leave now because I hate you. <laughs> yeah, no, like we talked about in pre-show, I literally, I, I didn't want to be that dude who went to a website that may or may not have been legal. I just was like, I, I wanted to see what was happening and just check in. And then the minute I turned on my phone, Chris Jericho unmasked and I went, well, fuck. Now I'm not going to turn this off. So now I have to basically spend a whole lot of money, if not just go to All In 2 to make up for the fact that I was a dick. It it was so... It's... it's yeah. I mean, yeah, they probably will, but we, we do need to go to that. If, if anything, just so I can be really attentive during that women's match, since I kind of, like, did the dishes while watching the replay of this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... I felt bad for our waitress at the Tilted Kilt because she would come over and be like, "Holy, holy shit! They still have Tilted Kilt where you you live?" <laughs> yeah, dog. Well, we were in Atlanta, but yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, so, it's like the last one left. So we were. They in closed the- both the ones in Orlando. Yeah, so uh, she would just come over. Blake would be like, "Hell, can I have a beverage?" And then uh, Michael, our friend, would be like, "I would like this drink." Then she would come to me and I'd be like, "Whoop whoop." <laughs> Whoop, whoop. Oh wait, sorry. Water, thank you. Whoop whoop. Cause that Okada Marty match, which apparently, having read the comments for the latest BTE, a lot of people are giving Marty shit for that match. I really liked it. I enjoyed it. Like the storytelling. So, was so perfect. here's the thing. No, here's the thing. The problem was the pay per view, while great, was not time managed properly. Yeah. There were multiple segments you could have gotten rid of. You could have gotten rid of the whole Bully Ray angle after the the ROH title match. You could have cut that whole segment, given that time to the main event. You could have cut like you couldn't have cut the Joey Ryan segment. That was that was great. By the way, side side as, as an aside, that is the greatest commentary team. Like Don Callis, Excalibur, and Ian Riccoboni. That is the greatest commentary team I've ever listened to in my life. Oh yeah. Like I can't I can't go back to anything now. Like I forgot how much I loved Excalibur. Just saying, Joey Ryan, Ryan channeling dark penis magic. Like okay, or no, the the dark dick arts. Or like I forget what the fuck he said, but I was like, fuck you, Excalibur. Just fuck you. A failing cephalasis. Like I just. I, no. I've never popped to see uh, a commentator until they cut to that commentary team and went, oh fuck, Excalibur's there. Hell yes. <laughs> yeah, you and me had the same reaction. I was like, that sounds. 
That kind of sounds like Excalibur, but I don't remember when they cut to him. I was just like, oh, shit. Yeah, exactly. But, but yeah. yeah, no, um, the problem with that was that there were so many other matches that could have gotten a little bit of time, but Marty and Okada's A was right before it, and B did was like a little a little long. They didn't like waste any time. There was no if you watch the match, there's no period of that match where it's like, oh well this this didn't need to be there. Like it was just yeah. poorly timed. And then everybody was like, oh, but the main event was only whatever. Like, the main event was a six man. Yeah. Like the main event was a feel good moment. The main event like, was you already... the main event was the spot fest to send everyone home happy with the people running the show winning. Yeah, but um apparently it was supposed to be like twice that that length, so it might have turned into not a spot fest, but Yeah. Oh no, my no. What, what am I by, by the way, I can't I can't tell you how hard I popped for so many different parts of that. I'm so glad Liesl Liesl wasn't here when I watched it. I'm so thankful because I yelled at the TV, is that fucking Lanny Poffo? What the f <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. During the uh I was like, Black Machismo <laughs> entrance. Black Machismo I, I I heard I heard the music, I saw it, and I was just like I was I was like, ah, damn it! I should have gotten I I should have gotten Scotty to agree that I got a point if he came out as black <laughs> machismo. Yeah. But then but then Lenny Pava was with him and he had the the brother of brothers from from other mothers shirt on of the two of them like like fucking yeah. like shaking hands. I was just like, this is the greatest bullshit wrestling moment I have ever seen. Mm-hmm. See what- everything about that the the the. Freaking Adam Page is now the Joey killer. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite moments, and I it, it was it was on this week's Being the Elite, which I watched at work because we were so fucking dead tonight. I was able to yeah, watch... Yeah, I haven't had 47 minutes yet, or yeah. else I would have. <laughs> That's how slow it was. I was able to watch a 47-minute Being the Elite, but it was Matt at the end of the show during their speech just being like, yeah, we might have had to cut that one a little bit short. And then, like, trying his best not to break kayfabe, he just went, we had to beat him really fast. We had to go fast. Had to fast track that win, Mm -hmm. you know. Gotta go, gotta gotta go fast. Mm -hmm. Gotta go fast. So, uh, do you have a match of the show? Um... Oh, Omega, Omega Pentagon. Yeah. Match of the show for me. That was... That was so good. I watched that match and I was like, "Holy shit, that was that was potent. That was probably five stars. Meltzer's probably going to five star that. That didn't have that didn't have like a bad a bad spot in it." Well, see, I didn't even realize they had a match cuz when I turned it on, they were already doing the Jericho angle, so I thought that was the beginning. And Pentagon came out and then they started having the match and then he unmasked and then I went, "Oh, wait, hold on. No, they had a whole match before this as well." From what I've seen, the one I'm excited, because I haven't gotten to watch the whole thing yet, the one I'm most excited to watch so far is definitely the Paige Janela match. Because apparently oh. that looked like two men trying to murder one another. Joey Janela has has um, has gained fame like within the wrestling industry for three main reasons. One is entrepreneurship. He's had like the Joey Janela spring break and takes New York and all that. Two is his like if HBK hadn't found Jesus look <laughs> and then, and then three is for giving literally zero fucks about his well being during the course of a match. Yes. And uh, yeah, it looked like it, especially the fucking end ending spot that I've definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I'm so glad that that went better. Cause Paige has done that move that, that spot one time before when he, when he wrestled against, uh, Jay Briscoe. Yeah. But his like, you know, his knee pads sometimes like fall down. Mm-hmm. They did. And he cut his like knees on the table when he oh, did it. Fuck. It was so gnarly to watch. I was like, Oh, you, I like, I like wanted to reach through and give him a hug and some Neosporin. Like, <laughs> Just brutal looking. See, with me, of what I've seen, which was just the ending of Pentagon, Skrull, and Okada, and then main event, Skrull Okada was really good. Like, the storytelling was perfect. Like, mm-hmm. th- like the him doing the 205, and then Marty grabbing his hands and breaking the fingers was so beautiful. 
it's it's almost like Okada is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Yeah. Hey, well, let's not let's not stop let's not shit on Marty here. The boy did I know. his part. L- listen, listen, freaking Okada got a four star match out of Bad Luck Fale and Cody in back to back months. Oh yeah. Yeah, that makes a little bit more sense. How, <laughs> like, how was the Cody match, by the way? Because, fuck, the, the, just the imagery that I saw out of it. Like, the pictures looked emotionally shit. Like, it was, it was really, it was, oh God, how do I explain this? So, if actual, it's sort of like, old school wrestling and, like, new school production... Yeah, met up. It was like that because there were so many moments of it. I was like, "This is like a match. This is like a class." Because Nick Aldis wrestles like a classic NWA wrestler. Mm-hmm. Like if he had been two decades earlier or like three decades earlier, eighties, he would have he would have ruled a territory all by himself. Right. But like, there's a spot where he elbows Brandy Rhodes like top rope elbows her because she throws herself on top of Cody to protect him. Holy that's a fuck. spot in the match that's a good yeah it was a great spot by the way everybody shits on him and i was just like i she wasn't there when he jumped clearly that was but like everybody was like you monster on the commentary team was like you fuckers have monitors you saw the same thing i did yeah, yeah. but uh, uh it also had a it also had a non like finishing move ending sequence oh that's just nice. like i you know to try to keep nick looking strong because it turned into a like oh like Cody was crafty, but like the entrances with DDP and freaking Tommy walking out with Cody and then Jeff Jarrett and our, uh, Sean Davari walking out with Nick. Yeah. Like it, it really, it was like the most big match. Like it, it was like a boxing match. You walk out with your fucking entourage. It was like that. It was so sweet. Uh, the match and the match itself was pretty, was pretty solid. There was like some, there was some fuckery. It's, it's pro wrestling. Like, yeah. But it had that, like, you know, that old school fuckery feel. I was like, no, this isn't like new school WWE fuckery. This is this is a classic fuckery right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Blake, did you have you watched? <laughs> Blake, have you watched it? I didn't know you watched it yet. Um, I've watched bits and pieces. I've only watched a couple oh, of full matches. Okay. I was like, please don't tell me I'm the only fucking person on this panel who has not watched All In yet. I mean, I didn't get to watch Zero Hour because I don't own cable. Oh, that means you missed the boy. You got to, you missed uh, good old Chucky. Sh- oh shit! We haven't done Dust Watch yet. What the fuck? Did it Dust Watch? Welcome to everyone's favorite segment of the show, which apparently that all- we forgot about. Which apparently only All In takes precedent over. It really does. I thought we were gonna transition into it, but yeah, okay, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what do we do? Like, do- sorry, sorry that you didn't go over it at hashtag All In. Um, yeah, well, uh, good to see that you. Good to see that you still got your shit in during the 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 battle royal, though. <laughs> You'll get him next time, buddy. Sorry, you, you gotta get over. you gotta get your shit in during the match. You just. It's like we don't even know. I don't even think he did get his shit in, but it's whatever. You got your shit in. Good luck next time. Listen, I'm just looking forward to all the great best friends videos we're going to get from the fact that, like, everybody was there. Oh, yeah. 100% is going to be fantastic. Best friends with the Young Bucks. And it's like, no, those two don't match up at all. Best friends with... They could probably do best friends with Cody. Cody Cody would probably drink cheap beer and, like, be weird with those guys for a while. Smoking cigars, yeah. Yeah. I mean... Cody just wants people to drink beer with from everything I understand. Mm-hmm. He's, oh, yeah, you, 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 you listened to the Jericho podcast. He was like, yeah, I bought these this six pack of, of tall boys because I thought like it was a like, you know, it was a big occasion. I thought, of it, nope, just me sitting in this restaurant drinking the whole six pack by myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Did you see where Sammy Callahan actually almost fucking died? Oh yeah, because somebody because he broke too many plastic chairs. That's a good reason to try to murder somebody. Yeah, yeah right. That's a great reason to throw someone out of your venue and almost shoot him. 
Well, to be oh, well, hold on. He I'm... broke some plastic chairs. He thought it was an angle, too, when the guys came to kick him out. Yeah. Afterwards, okay, hold on. Let me see if I can get the exact story. During Jacobs and Callahan's match, Jacobs was placed under a stage, and Callahan stacked metal chairs on top of him, not the folding chairs typically used in wrestling. Someone from building management angrily got on the phone and told Callahan not to break chairs. They would finish the match in the ring with Callahan winning. Afterwards, he was told to be removed, and security asked him to leave. He thought it was part of the show and started shoving and cussing out guards who were not part of the show. We have confirmed... Oh, wait, hold on. We have confirmed that Callahan was not threatened with a gun. Damn it, that's not oh, as fun. that's good. Uh, no, but it's much safer, isn't it? Oh, I, just love I feel line. much better for Sammy. Get the fuck out of the way, man! <laughs> I've got a clear shot on the target! He's got a chair in hand. An innocent chair. <laughs> Sir, put the chair down. That chair has a family. Sammy's got like a switchblade held to like the cotton backing of the chair. They're like, don't do it. We're going to have to duct tape over that if you do this. <laughs> it's not going to look pleasant. It's <laughs> it won't look pleasant. We won't be able to put that out in the main audience. That's going to have to be in the back for the people with the wheelchairs. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? what? So they can look at it while they sit in their wheelchair? No, they want to, if they want to move over to a normal chair, they get the duct taped chair. Oh. Because fuck them, they can't feel their legs. <laughs> They're just like, a normal person, this would be uncomfortable, but if you're in a wheelchair, you won't feel it. It's fine. Oh, so that is why they're moving down. Fair enough. Fair play, fair play, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Uh, Wrestling. Holy shit. So, so, so the real question, the real question I want to pose you now is, is um, now that All In was uh, the greatest indie show that's ever happened, mm -hmm. uh, um... How, how do we live with the fact that we didn't go? I, I'm i fine with it, because I got to promote... I got to go shill a fuck ton at Dragon Con. Oh, yeah. Did you did you, did you you do a good Ric Flair impersonation during your panel? Oh, man. No, Ric wasn't there. Otherwise, I would. However, one of my friends was there, who the first time me and him hung out at Dragon Con, I came dressed as Ric Flair, and we traded Flair impressions back and forth. This is his last year going to Dragon Con. So as he came to like say goodbye, I was just like solemnly like, Big man, come here. It's going to be a long time till we see each other again. Woo! But the nature boy will always be here for you, big man. Woo! That was the most, <laughs> na that was the most nature boy I got through it. We, we've been going up the roads up and down <laughs> <laughs> you'll always have a free pass to space mountain <laughs> oh my god oh oh no what guys i'm gonna be ha i'm happy with jim Cornette for once did he did, did did he did he shit on somebody you don't like i find look i the way that i am with jim Cornette is like 60 to 75 percent of the stuff he says i don't agree with but the rest i'm like yeah you're right like whatever he was saying about austin aries about how he needed a cheeseburger yeah aries needs a cheeseburger and to chill out at frank wwe clown i am a professional wrestler and then a picture of frank in his shitty gear someone sends a picture to it to jim with the caption what the fuck is this and then Jim says, why not? Every other fucking asshole in the world thinks they are. <laughs> I feel like that was indirectly aimed at Steve and Amel. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's where, here's where Frank the Clown fucked up. You heard that right, James. I am a professional wrestler, and in my very first match, I helped sell out one of the largest independent shows Chicago had seen in years while you sat on your couch and complained on the internet about inflatable dicks. I don't think anyone knew he was gonna be in there when those tickets went on sale. In fact, I would argue it would have lessened it. Oh, yeah, they would... 
Actually, they would have negatively sold out 10,000 mm -hmm. seats if they mentioned Frank the Clown. <clears throat> and then the retort. Son! Oh. You're in way over your head, so I'll take it easy this time. Only way you helped sell out anything was by appearing across the street, hence running everyone the other way to escape your stupid-looking outlaw gimmick ass. Shut up when grown folks are talking, and fuck off! Oh my god, Corny! Corny, I love you, but I hate you, and I need you, but I can't. <laughs> I'll, I will hate you tomorrow, Jim, but, but tonight... <laughs> But I love I love you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hate you tomorrow, but I'll love you tonight, baby. Which is also one of my favorite Road Dog songs. <laughs> oh my god, that was good because I was like, oh, the segment's winding down, but we don't have a lot. We gotta fill the rest of this time. And then I just saw the caption: Frank the Clown gets into argument with Jim Cornette. And I'm gonna click on that shit right fucking now. <laughs> You never go full Frank. You never go full Frank. When was your turning point? Because I was a fan of Frank in the beginning when he was a fan. Um, I hated him from the first moment that I saw him mentioned on Reddit. Oh, really? I, yeah. See, I hated him from the first promo for the show where Mick Foley didn't like him. And if Mick Foley hates you, you have to be a shit person. Something has to be wrong with you, exactly. Nick, Nick, Mick Foley is literally Santa Claus. So if Santa Claus hates you, you're, you're just a trash person. See, at first I, I, I jokingly didn't like him because I was just like, he's with Noel Foley. I don't like him because he's dating the pretty girl. Then it went on and it turned from like a joke hatred into a, actually, fuck this guy. He's kind of the worst. And what makes me even more mad is I don't know how much of it is him working us and how much of it is his real personality. Because if it's him working us, I hate him more now. Well, even if it is him working us, I feel like he's not very far away from being that person in real life. Like, you know how they say the best gimmicks are a person's personality turned up to 11? Yeah, yeah. I feel like even if that is his gimmick and his character, he's still a pretty shitty dude. And also, I love this concept. Like, imagine you took the concept of Frank the Clown to Vince, and you're like, all right, it's this guy, and he's gotten a lot of stuff because, because of his girlfriend and through all that, and so he uses that to kind of inflate his ego, and he plays this egotistical card. And I would like to say, like, he got quote unquote famous from sitting and watching wrestling exactly and that's not like well anything i would be proud well, hold of on, hold on we're still pitching it to vince we're still saying like all right and just through all that he's managed to get this spot and he's got this huge ego but he's also kind of like a cowardly heel i like it what else i don't he dresses like a clown every once in a while we're not really sure what that's all about but it's fine so wait, hold on, what's that got to do with the whole ego thing? Oh, nothing, he's just got fucking face paint on. I loved the shitty little promo he did for his match against David Arquette, where he did basically like that Finn Balor-esque human, and then he's wearing his face paint, except instead of having creepy demon makeup, it's just fucking half a clown face. Oh man, he did clown face? Yeah, man, it's real racist. <laughs> Man, I know real clowns that actually do like real clown work. Yeah, that, come on, man. That's offensive to me. And I'm being 100% serious right now too. Yeah. So I've been a clown, and I just guys, this is it's upsetting me. There's only one way. There's only one way I could really feel happy again. Oh no. It's for people to go to merch.aloadofpurebs.com and pick up some merchandise. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Merch.aloadofpurebs.com is the website where you can find merch for all of your favorite BS Network programs, from the Fight Boys to Opposite Attractions, all of it over there. And then, of course, we got shirts for the JWF. Pick up shirts for all your favorite JWF superstars, from Canada Charlie to Blake Tanner, all over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. Dot. Canada Charlie got a great shirt out there. It just says Canada's for winners. Yeah, <laughs> that Blake now owns. And Blake, you had a really good Canada Charlie cosplay for Dragon Con. 
I did. Um, and everyone knew who I was. That was the most amazing thing. Exactly. But speaking of Charlie and the JWF, I think it's time to turn it over to Captain Tibbs and Silver Spoon for another episode of JWF Monday Night War. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to JWF Monday Night War. I am your host, Silver Spoon, joined, as always, by the Clown Prince of Crime. It's Captain Tibbs. I, Sells, I'm playing that Fortnite oh, I, I... on my phone. I shot a guy. I hear it's all the rage with the kids nowadays, Tibbs. Oh, are you saying that I shot a kid? I think you might have shot a child, but Tibbs, let me tell you something. You know what happens to people who shoot children? What? They go straight to heck. Like the next great JWF pay-per-view. Heck in a sec, we're only two weeks away, Tibbs, and we've already got some amazing matches announced for it that... Fatal four-way heck in a sec match where we already know Blake Tanner, Canada Charlie, and a few other men are going to be facing off in that horrifying structure. And right now, we're going to be determining the next man to join them in this qualifying match between Mojo Gruff and the man with a body of steel, AJ Steel. Tibbs, who have you got in this match? I don't know, but I just can't wait to shove one of these guys into that cell like little sardines. Smush him in. That's right, Tibbs. And oh, looks like this match starting off with a bang as AJ leveling Mojo with a huge clothesline. That body is still laying down on Mojo. Let me tell you something, that small body, it's not gonna look good as he's laying in ooh, fishy shots to the skull. And now play into the crowd. Tibbs, look at the ego of AJ Steele. I mean, of course. Oh, he mashed his head like a Play-Doh. Dog. I was going to say, and we know, of course, the history of these two as well, rivals in JXT, but it seems like AJ is confident going into this match. Now it looks like he's bouncing off the ropes, going for a big leg drop, but wait! Mojo with a beautiful drop toe hold, taking AJ down to the mat. A little bit of wrestling prowess coming from Mojo Gruff. Now bouncing off the ropes, and ooh, a big, beautiful standing senton onto the body of AJ, going for a quick pin. One, Two, ooh, and a quick kick out from AJ Steele. And the body of Steele, he does not look happy, Tibbs. No, he, he looks quite disgruntled. That's right. Now the two making it back to their feet. Now Mojo attempted to whip Steele into the corner. But wait, AJ reversing, flinging Mojo up and over the turnbuckle. But wait, Gruff actually landing on his feet on the other side of the apron. Tibbs looks like uh, him going for a big springboard. But wait a minute. AJ Steele actually catching him mid-air for a big backbreaker. That body of Mojo looks like it's broken in half, Tibbs. Oh, someone get a stretcher. Going for a pin, but ooh, Mojo quickly kicking out. Let Tibbs, these two, they're pulling out all the stops to make their way into the heck in a sec fatal four-way. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't know why, Silves. Most men I know will be running as far away from that thing as they could. That's right. Now it looks like AJ calling for something big. Grabbing Mojo off the ground, trying to hit a big German suplex. But wait! Mojo actually slipping out of his grip, reversing around it. Oh, a big suplex of his own! And it looks like Mojo isn't done picking up Steel, and he's got him! He hits it! The bar! Ha! But last, that beautiful twisting cutter sending AJ face first into the mat. And Tibbs, I think Gruff's about to finish things off, climbing to the top rope for that big Bayou die. All right, and look at him sailing through the air, but wait! Steel actually grabbing him mid-air once again, and he's got Mojo held upside down, all the blood rushing to the head of the man from the Bayou, Tibbs. Ooh. Ooh, what's he gonna do? That's right, Mojo scrambling to get free, but unfortunately it looks like that's not gonna work as, ooh, a vicious steel patented pile driver onto the voodoo man, his skull crashing against the mat. Tibbs, I don't think he might be dead. I didn't know he could do pile drivers anymore. All right, now going for that pin is AJ Steele. One, two, Three and ladies and gentlemen, it looks like AJ Steele is head to heck in a sec. Tim, this is exciting. 
Is that the guy with the boner pills? That is, in fact, the man with AJ's dick pills. But I think he's gonna need a whole lot more than that to take on Blake Tanner, take on Canada Charlie, and of course, whoever is gonna be qualifying next week in this fatal four-way heck in a sec match. Or he's gonna need a lot of dick pills. That's right, Tibbs. And of course, the heck in a sec structure, it's horrifying, a terrifying structure, a, a match of your own invention. Could you tell us about it? All right. So one day I was walking past this abandoned lot in the middle of the city. And I saw it was surrounded by this fence. This fence was six to eight feet high in some places. It had barbed wire covering it. And the first thing I thought was, what if I smashed a man up against that fence? And I said, but what if everything was the fence? That's right, Tibbs. In this match, everything is a fence. And there will be some heavy offense from these men, including, of course, the JWF champion, Blake Tanner, in this match that some people have called one of the toughest he's had in his reign as champion. Of course, Blake Tanner coming up on his one-year reign as champion. I don't think we've ever seen somebody hold the title for this long. It's definitely one for the record book, Sills. A title reign like Blake Tanner said he wanted long and strong. And down to get the friction on. That's right, Tibbs. And we've sent one of our top interviewers backstage to have a nice little chat with Blake Tan. Ladies and gentlemen, Don the Don McDonald here with the JWF World Heavyweight Champion, Blake Tan. Now, Blake, after that opening bout, we now know two of the men that you're going to be facing in the JWF heck in a sec fatal four-way match. You, we know you're going to be facing... Canada Charlie, who qualified last week, and of course, AJ Steele, who had an impressive showing against Mojo Gruff earlier tonight. Now, we both know that both of these men are willing to use some pretty despicable tactics to get their way, but do you think those tactics could possibly lead to you losing that title? Well, Don, I've done a lot of thinking about this match and about who could be in this match. I know Tibbs wants to make this heck in a sec monumental. I know he wants to see just how many men he can smoosh into that hell in a cell. See how much carnage and chaos we can create. He could have made this match a six man, eight man. Hell, throw the entire roster. Everyone we got into this ring. But that wouldn't change a thing for me. It wouldn't change the fact that I'm focus on one person and one person alone. Canada Charlie. For two years in a row, my Summerfest dreams were turned into nightmares and everything was ruined thanks to Charlie. He came out, he attacked me with a steel chair, he broke my face, he aligned himself with Felix Ball, and I'm out for revenge for that. We all know that I'm walking out of that match with the title. We all know that I've faced better men and I fought harder fights. So I'm gonna have a whole hell of a lot of fun at heck in a sec. I'm gonna rake Charlie's face across that cold steel. I'm gonna brutalize him with whatever weapons I see fit and if those cowards are willing to chase me to the top, I'm gonna do just what I did last year and slam them down down, down to the bottom of that cage. And I show Charlie what it means to go to hell. I want to brutalize him in just a few weeks. So am I afraid of my title being taken away? To go back to your main point. No. AJ doesn't scare me. All he knows how to do is talk a big talk, sell some boner medication, and, and say some really weird and problematic things. Charlie definitely doesn't scare me because no matter how well he's been doing over the last few months, he will never be someone who can match the skill and the ability that I can bring into the ring. And whoever else gets in there, it's not going to matter either. For the last year, every match that I've been in has been about this title. But at heck in a sec... This isn't going to be about the title. The title is mine. I'm going to take it. This match is about my pride. 
It's about showing Canada Charlie why you don't ever disrespect the JWF champion. And it's why it's about showing the entire world why I am the man that deserves to have this belt around my waist. And nobody's going to change that. Well, Tibbs, looks like Blake Tanner is... He knows he's going to win this match. I mean, do you think he's a little bit arrogant heading into this? I think he has confidence, Sills, and I think it is a well-deserved confidence. That's right, Tibbs. And speaking of well-deserved confidence, I'd like to talk about our JWF Captain's Champion, the Dillon. A man who has both well-deserved confidence that may actually become a bit of egotism and a little bit of craziness, uh, as we've seen in his quest against the hammer man one of the biggest names in the jwf the masked man who last week the dylan brutally beat down in the middle of this ring declaring them to have a match at heck in a sec and of course after that he revealed to the world the supposed identity of the hammer man to be travis clouds the man from the jw or the man from the vwo who of course at last year's Los Trios Tangos was forced out of the JWF for good, forced out of professional wrestling. Tibbs, what do you have to say to these accusations? No. It's, oh, okay, just no. Well, of course, I, I think the most shocking thing to come out of that is not the revelation of him possibly being Travis, but instead the fact that on tonight, the main event, the Hammer Man finally speaks. And Tibbs, we hear the music going, we hear it coming over the intercom. The Hammer Man is coming out. Are you excited? I love him. He's the best. Hammer Man, Hammer Man, Hammer Man. That's right. He looks poised and confident in the middle of that ring. But wait! From out of nowhere, Scotty Moore rushing into the ring, hitting a vicious SMG on the masked man. Of course, this is the same thing we saw last week when he super kicked Guy Fieri before his interview as well. I, what in the world's in Scotty Moore's mind? I don't know, but I'll tell you I'm real pissed off right now. That's right, Tibbs, but it looks like Scotty Moore actually grabbing that uh, that microphone that was meant for the hammer man. Let's hear what he's got to say. You people, you people just don't get it. Not yet, at least. I, I mean, what did I say last week? What did I say to each and every one of you? I said, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here to change the JWF for the better. I'm doing this for you. I am doing this by destroying each and every one of your so-called heroes. Guy Fieri, the hammer man, I won't rest until they fall underneath my boot. Because I... I know what it takes to be the hero of the JWF. Hell, each and every one of you used to chant hero when I walked into this ring. You wore the damn t-shirt that said heroes never die. And I'm standing here quite alive today to prove it. And let me tell you something. Being a hero certainly doesn't mean coming out here in a mask dancing around for you idiots. It doesn't mean getting beat at every single pay-per-view you've ever appeared on and still coming back into the ring. No, no, no. Being a hero means being someone that people look up to. It means being somebody that people respect. And as far as I'm concerned, the Hammer Man deserves none of that respect. Guy Fieri deserved none of of that respect, but you know who does deserve it? Me. The man who beat Momoa Curry so badly that he wasn't able to walk out of this ring. The man who took the supposed god of the JWF and I made him tremble underneath my feet. The man who is your new god. And yet, do I get the main event spot anymore? Do I get the respect that I deserve? No. No, no. I get relegated. Get relegated to the backstage interview. After backstage interview. While guys like the Hammer Man get to come out and gloat for you all. 
that, oh, he's finally learned how to speak. Oh, we're so proud of you, Hammerman. You can do the thing that I've done since day one. No, 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 no. You say that we don't get it, Scotty Moore. You say that we don't understand who deserves a spotlight. Well, let me tell you something. I don't give a damn how many Momoa Curries you beat. I don't give a damn what you've done in this ring if you don't bring in the numbers you're supposed to. You want to talk about respect. You see, the Hammer Man is in the main event because the Hammer Man is a damn draw. He is an icon to the people. He's what they're here to see. Not you. Tonight, I felt it would have been appropriate to have the Hammer Man come out in our main event and give us what we've all been owed, an explanation. Something that we, the people, have wanted for a long time. You, I let you get your shit in every week, Scotty Moore. Or, the Hammer Man, he was going to come out and he was going to get his. Give us an honest account of his life. And then you came in and ruined it. You ruined it. You left him unconscious on that mat. And you want to talk to me about respect. You ruined my show for the last time, Scotty Moore. Because in heck, in a sec, I want you to prove just how much of a god you are. Because I'm going to put you in a steel structure made of torment and pain. A place that angels would not dare to dwell. A structure meant to break mere men like you. And I'll bet dollars to donuts that that godly nature you're touting could never hold a candle to a real demon. And I'm not talking about an Irish guy. And I'm not talking about some mayor from Knox County. Oh my god! From out of nowhere, Honeypot! Uh, uh, Tibbs, I didn't know Honeypot was still here. I, I thought you banished the demon out of the JWF, but it looks like he's right here assaulting Scotty Moore, forcing him to fall into the mat. Well, Sills, let's just say we've reached an arrangement. Well, I will say so is that massive monster stomping around the ring, Scotty Moore trying to crawl out, but oh, grabbing Scotty by the skull, lifting him up. My God, just look at the grip strength as he rains fists down onto the face. I mean, now it looks like the demon is unleashed as Scotty making his way back to his feet, but wait. Oh my God, what's Honeypot going for? Actually picked up the infamous one for a power bomb, but... Oh, it doesn't look like he's stopping. He's backed up and... Oh, my God! D oh, my God! D d he's tossed Scotty Moore clear out of the ring <laughs> and into the announce table to Tibbs! <laughs> oh, my God! This is carnage, ladies and gentlemen. Can we get somebody out here for Scotty Moore? He is not moving, Tibbs! Don't talk to me about respect again, boy. Oh, my God! Well, it, it looks like we finally got a... Solid card for JWF Heck in a Sec. We now have this Heck in a Sec match between Scotty Moore and the Demon Honeypot. We have the Dylan taking on the Hammer Man. And then, of course, the JWF Heck in a Sec fatal four way match between Blake Tanner, Canada Charlie, AJ Steele, and a man who is to be determined next week. And Tibbs, let me tell you something. This is, this is horrifying to see this. Oh, I know. And this is what happens when you don't let the Hammer Man speak. All right. Well, I guess if we want to see what happens next, you're going to have to tune in next time to JWF Monday Night War. All right. So, boys, it's okay. Uh, Dylan has now become a spectral vision. He cannot be seen by us anymore. He's totally still here, though. And that leads me to ask, Dylan, what did you learn this week? I, I learned that even a even a racist cornet is is right twice a day. Awesome! Good. What about you, Blake? What did you learn? I learned that the greatest genius in the business today is Ron fucking Killings. <laughs> and I, of course, learned that the only person worse than Jim Cornette is Frank the fucking clown. Uh, so Dylan can be found on Twitter at SexyChuckyT. Blake, where can they find you other than at your local doctor's office getting all your shit fixed? 
with vocal nodules for some strange reason after after a JWF it's just always re this really bad yeah, I don't know I man don't mine's, know. mine's actually getting there too I don't know why after we play the tape of JWF our voice goes out right uh, you can also find me though at blake810 or on twitter whenever i'm around and you can find me at the darkroom video on youtube that's darkroom v-i-d-y-a and also if you live in the birmingham area all two of you that listen um pre-show sales have started for a production of a show that i'm in called the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime wonderful show it was on Broadway, won several Tonys, and the rights just got released, so we were one of the first theaters in our region to do it, and um, it's going to be great. It's at Birmingham Festival Theater. Look at BirminghamFestivalTheater.com. That's right, and you can find me on Twitter at Scotty Mo. that's S-C-O-T-T-Y-E-M-O, and make sure to buy all my books on Amazon, the Quiesel Corp Trilogy, BS vs. the Gods, or go to AudibleTrial.com slash BS Network. Get a free 30-day trial of Audible, and you can get a free copy of either Quiesel Corp or Quiesel Corp Risen, and then BS vs. the Gods is going to be released soon as well. So you get a free 30-day trial. It still supports us. It's, it's a win-win situation. It's a symbiotic relationship just by helping us out at audibletrial.com slash BS Network. Or, of course, if you want to support other ways, there's a patreon.com slash a load of BS or merch.aloadofpurebs.com. So check that out and check out all the other shows at a load of pure bs.com and of course make sure to rate comment subscribe leave some feedback for us we love hearing what you have to say ladies and gentlemen and of course make sure to check out developmentally unstable me and blake's new show where we 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 go behind the scenes of the jwf we go into the developmental territories and we try to figure out uh who needs to come up next who needs to come next which means after uh, our re most recent episode, Blake, we know that there's a beer man coming to the JWF. Coming in. <laughs> and tune into our next episode where we probably won't make Cha Cha Slide. <laughs> We're good. The Cha Cha Man. So, yeah, check all that out, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And as always, you can find us at a load of purebs.com. Step up to the merch table at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. Find us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, donate to the Patreon, and remember to follow us on Twitter at Fight Boy Show Chuck Taylor. Because when you're a fight boy, you're a fight boy for life! <laughs>